praise the Lord. We warmly welcome you to Davar, the Word of Promise program. Today, we will be taking you through the scripture verses and Holy Mass readings meant for the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. My dear brothers and sisters, what does Christian discipleship mean? And why is discipleship necessary? The simple answer would be that we need to know Jesus Christ personally. And there are many reasons why Jesus called disciples. So today we will be discussing lengthily about these matters. And as we go through the scriptures uh, in a deeper way, we are blessed and privileged to have Reverend Father uh, Lalit Felix to assist us and take us deeper into the Holy Scripture. We welcome you, Father. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Father. So today also I invite you to give us a general theme for our viewers uh, so that we will have some general idea about the discussion we are having about the Liturgy of the Word said for today. So today, the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Liturgy of Word focuses really on the repentance, how we as the disciples of Christ uh, repent and become new people in our uh, journey towards holiness. Very specially, uh, uh, Jesus says the kingdom of God is at hand, uh, repent and believe. And in the first reading, Prophet Jonah calls the people of Nineveh for, for repentance and by which to experience the God's love and mercy and in which how we can become new people in the life. So these are the things that really speaks of in the liturgy of the word today. Thank you very much, Father. So, my dear brothers and sisters, that would be the summary for our today's discussion. So, in order to get a clearer picture, I think it's necessary that we go into the first reading for today. The first reading is taken from Prophet Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city city of Nineveh and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing. Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. Yes, Father. So, when we take uh, today's first reading from the book of Jonah, we gather about this all-powerful creator, how he was trying to pour out his wrath on the evil and the wicked. And in the same way, he was willing to uh, pour out his mercy upon the people who repented. So, if you could give us a background and explanation about this first reading, first and foremost. So as the Nineveh, the people were really away from the Lord. They were on their own way. So he got Jonah as the prophet who was to speak. But they here, straightforward we find proclaiming a calamity a destruction and it says 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. So it is straightforward destruction 
and there is no calling for any uh, repentance or anything like that here. It is uh, destruction. But the people there took it nicely and they found uh, if the destruction is there, we are to be better. We should change our life. That's why it says, so they started repenting with sackcloth, uh, small and great, everybody together. All people, they felt that they should change themselves. So, when they change only, the God's decision for destruction is also changed. And because he found now, these people, they really want to be better people. They look for the mercy and love of God. So naturally, God himself really had mercy on them and changed his decision and he showed his love for these people. So this is what the scripture says. Then for us, it is also that because to the extent that we behave in a way not pleasing to God, it is necessary that we change our lives. Uh, whoever the people or whatever the status that we have, sometimes in possessions or in uh, other things, we are great. But if we really go astray, if we really behave or act in sin, it is necessary that we change ourselves. And uh, he will not bring destruction, but he is there always to show mercy and love. So these people really experience the love of God, the mercy of God, and they were saved. Yes, Father. So we also hear that when the people in Nineveh, when they got to know about the destruction, they proclaimed a fast. And um, great and small, they put on sackcloth, which means they were willing to repent about their evil ways and to turn to God. So I think when it comes to the 21st century where we live, there are so many bad things, evil things taking place in our world, which is displeasing to God. So uh, the key word for today is also repentance. Because we have the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, we can always have a change of heart and return to God if we have failed God. If you could just tell our viewers how this applies to us. Now, as we live in this world also today, the world is that there is lots of evil reigning. And uh, many people embrace evil and many people were uh, really directed to temptations of evil that we see. Very specially, the love and mercy of God are always there for all of the people. Whether they are great or small, uh, sometimes some people they are uh, not uh, great, but they are small. Uh, even then, uh, their life is really rooted in evil. So such people towards the God, the Lord of mercy, which change and turn naturally, he is ready to give us mercy. Therefore, what is this conversion or change? This is very much important. Change does not mean that I acknowledge I am, sin I am in that sin. Uh, okay, okay, I understand it is sin. No. Now, repentance means now here they put on sackcloth, it means they started feeling sorry. Then secondly, they want to change, turn to God. So they feel sorry and they started turning to God. So it means they left the evil way and turned to God in the, for the righteousness. So that is there. And then they in their feeling of sorry, they made a fast. What do you mean by fast? A penance or something that I give because that I 
heard the Lord. I went against the Lord. I heard the neighbor and I do not want hurt again. The fast means the compensation or something that I pay for the sin that I have made or committed. So this we really experience, we really see in the life of the people of Nineveh. The fasting, sackcloth and turning to God again. So that's where they experience. Now in the world today, many people are ready to say, yes, we have done it. But they are not ready to change. Even uh, you see for the destruction of our country here today, Many people, they say, we have done it, we have gone through, we have went wrong. But still, we continue the same. But repentance does not mean that we continue the same evil. We get away from evil and we turn or we have a total uh, change of our life from evil, from other unwanted evil towards the goodness towards righteousness, towards justice. And to the extent that we change that way with all the feeling of sorry for other people, feeling that I made it, sorry God, naturally we experience a newness in the life. Yes, Father, if you could tell us more about this repentance, that will move God's heart and that will pour down his mercy upon us. You could just tell us more about this act of God, that mercifulness of God that we could experience only through repentance. Yes, naturally it is through repentance. But when we come with the repentance, we have to tell our own brokenness. We have to accept our own brokenness. Now when we come to the Lord, with repentance, accepting our own brokenness or the, our own darkness, God never asks, why did you do it? Huh? Is it now you felt it? No. He asks, yes, come, I have my love for you. Now you have accepted. You want to be a new people, person. Yes, I give you the newness. My love I pour you, my forgiveness I give you. So in that way, we are really getting reconciled with God, not only with God, with the one and the neighbor, and we get reconciled with them. But the other thing is, as we turn, there will be a new world. There will be a new person. So that new person is necessary. That's why the sackcloth made them a new as that that we as we come to reconciliation with God we are new persons and we move towards a new direction yes father so meaningful I think with that it's time for us to move to the uh, responsorial psalm uh, the psalm for today is uh, psalm number 25 verse 4 to 5 6 to 7 8 to 9. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus, he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Um, yes, Father, so when we take this uh, responsorial psalm, uh, psalm number 25, uh, this very eagerly, the psalmist is very eagerly asking the Lord to make him know his ways, which means uh, to guide him in the truth, to teach him about his paths, 
So, could you emphasize the value of God's ways, the importance of his path when it comes to this? Now, when we take the psalmist, he is really looking for the direction or God's guidance for a living, a living pleasing to him, pleasing to God himself. Now, his desire that to the extent that I know the path, the way, then naturally I can take that path and walk about and live. So therefore, it is necessary the guidance of the Lord. So he, the psalmist, look for God's coming and teaching him the correct way of living, the righteous way, and also the truth. Now, as we know, in the world, we find truth as well as untruth. We find justice as well as injustice. So all are mingled and it is because the world is good as well as there is evil in the world. So all is there. But with the guidance of the Lord and the light of the Spirit, naturally a son of God or a daughter of God can really find what God desires, what God expects of. So therefore, like psalmist, it is necessary that we uh, pray and always ask God's guidance of the Spirit so that we can find where we are to move, where should be our new direction. Because uh, evil is not as we have seen in the history. Today, it has come in a new way, in new systems. Now, earlier there was no mobile. Now, in the mobile itself, the evil is there. And also goodness is there. Now, to the extent that we have the guidance of the Spirit, the light of the Spirit, then we can find the truth. We can, with wisdom, discern what is right. So all that is for that, we really need God himself. It is not we alone find our own goodness. We find the goodness with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus presents us in his own teaching the goodness, the right path, and the Holy Spirit with his light gives us the prudence and wisdom to have the understanding where we should go for. So this way we find the psalmists look for the direction of the Lord and also today we in the modern world we have to look for the direction of the Holy Spirit, the light of the Holy Spirit so that we can really find the path of the Lord, the way of the Lord. Yes, Father. And to add to that, when we talk about the Lord's path, isn't it the commandments, the precepts and the norms that the, God, the Lord himself has given to us for, to follow? And he has given all of them out of love, out of deep love that we will be safe from all evil uh, temptations and sorrow and all that. So if you could um, tell our viewers about the importance of uh, following these commandments, observing these commandments in a special way. Yeah. Now, in the Old Testament, always the direction of the Lord is given uh, with commandments. And uh, it really depends on Torah, the laws. To the extent that they follow the law, to the extent that they go with the law or the uh, directions given as commandments, they find that they are moving in the correct way. And the, on the other hand, as you have listened to the first reading, he said, uh, for 40 days I give, then otherwise I will destroy. So, in the Old Testament there is also the punishments. The punishments are there and with that punishment, they will get all 
uh, distractions for life. That's what they were said uh, for 40 days. Within 40 days, we, uh, the, Nineveh, the city of Nineveh is destroyed. So likewise, uh, in the Old Testament, it is there. So following of the Lord's commands, following of the Lord's instructions are very much important uh, to move with the uh, newness of life. But when we come to the New Testament, uh, it is not only the commandments, it is with the guidance of the Spirit that we get into the teaching of, the, of Christ and we find how, to we, how we should follow him. I will explain it with the gospel, but uh, if we really go with the Old Testament, we are called to see the commandments and the teachings as well as uh, Torah, very especially the law, is the way to go in, along the path of God. Yes, Father. So with that, uh, let's move to the gospel narration for today. Uh, the Gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verse 14 to 20. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the Gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little further and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So, they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. Father, so when we take this gospel uh, narrative taken from um, St. Mark's Gospel, uh, we see uh, how Jesus calls uh, his disciples uh, and uh, he says, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. If you could uh, explain to us about the context and take us uh, deeper into this uh, passage. Uh, here we find according to St. Mark in his gospel, Jesus' coming into scene with the proclamation of his mission. So in that he begins now. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at, at hand. So the promise of salvation is given. Now it is the time for its fulfillment. So with that he says the kingdom of God is at hand. So those who are to get into the kingdom, the first thing they need is repentance. So as uh, for the people of Nineveh, there was a command that for 40 days there will be a destruction. So they start a repentance. Now here directly begins his preaching. So you need first to repent. If you are to enter into the kingdom, if you are to enter into my God's, my Father's kingdom, you need first repentance. So what does repentance mean? It is a change of heart. Now, change of heart does not mean uh, transplant of heart. It's not that. Change of heart means that you have a turn or about turn towards God. Where well, you, are, you are having your evil way, from that you come to God. First, you turn to God with all 
uh, acceptance, acknowledgement of your failure, sins, very specially sins. And then you have to believe in the gospel. So this is the second thing, but most important. As you change and turn, you believe. Now, believe does not mean you just accept what the good news is, but you put yourself into the living of the good news. So, as you change, as you turn, you take the teaching of Christ, very specially the, all the teachings of Christ. First, the love that you live. Second, the commands that he has given, all that is necessary. But priority is love. Now, in the New Testament with Christ, with Jesus, it is not a law only. It is mainly love. In that love, so we are called to have love beyond the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament love uh, means uh, love your neighbor, means love your friend, but hate your enemy. Now, as you come to the New Testament, there cannot be hate. So you have to love the enemy too. So you have to go beyond. And then in that love, uh, love should be like the love of Jesus. So in the New Testament, the measure of love is love of Jesus. So with that, the teaching is that, that we have to put ourselves or turn ourselves into this teaching of Christ as well as the commandments of Christ because we can't get away from the commandments too. Because now uh, they came and asked with regard to marriage. Now uh, you say uh, you can have this way, live this way, but uh, Jesus uh, was questioned saying, uh, Old Testament Moses was saying that we can leave the uh, wife and get into another marriage. What do you say? Then he said, no, at the very beginning, it is that God created man and woman and asked them to be in that union. So it is that, so man can't separate it. So that way he really brings about what is generally accepted and what God gave at the very beginning. So these things are there for the life to have the pattern of life. So therefore, we find repentance is turning to God as well as putting ourselves and accepting the teaching of Jesus more than the accepting, living the teaching of Jesus. Thus we are in the process of following the Lord Jesus as our master. Yes, Father, as you just mentioned, uh, Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to bring it to perfection. Therefore, we need to follow the commandments as well, uh, as you just mentioned. And with that, I have another uh, very important question to raise here. Uh, Jesus uh, calls his disciples. He says, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At that point, the disciples were ready. They abandoned their nets, their father, their boats and the hired men their servants, they were willing to give up everything in order to follow Jesus. Uh, so if you could just tell our viewers, when we hear Lord's calling, when, when we hear Lord's calling us to discipleship, what should our response be? Yeah, now, uh, when these people met Jesus, uh, Jesus really called. Right? They didn't start following. Jesus called them, come. And they understood what it is and they started going after Jesus, leaving everything. And this is where that we find sometimes in our lives, uh, we are called for some ministry. 
So in the discipleship, uh, we are not called. Now suppose uh, somebody is married. Uh, now uh, Jesus is not asking, leave your wife and come. Leave your husband and come. No. While having this marriage, uh, he may call for lots of vocations. We have lots of vocations in our life. Uh, teaching, catechism, uh, reading, then uh, charity activities. In that way, lots of activities are there. These are called the ministries. So uh, to these ministries, so he calls. What happens? We are not to abandon or we are not ready to set aside a time for the Lord. That is where we find sometimes the difficulty of responding to him. We are called and we are to give our lives. So again, we find there are vocations he calls for which totally life should be committed. Abandon and give totally. Suppose marriage. Now, for the wife or for the husband, totally life should be given. So, very special. It is a life very specially called for holiness. The religious life as well as life of a priest. So, these are demands and callings, but demands are different. Uh, the living like a husband and wife is different, but it is for holiness. Living like a priest is different, but is, it is for holiness. Mm -hmm. Living like a religious is different, but same end. So the calling is there and we have to abandon few things now. When we have, um, we get into a marriage, the one is that you are to be faithful. So there cannot be a promiscuous love. So you have to give yourself, you have to feel your husband is your body, your wife is your body, and we are one. So in that uh, oneness or unity, you should live in fidelity. So demands are that. So you put everything aside and get into those demands and live the married life. And when the priest is there, so in that priesthood, uh, the difference is fidelity is there into priesthood. So no other union, but you put yourself like a eunuch for the Lord. So those demands are there and you put other things away and put yourself totally for this calling. So we find that way. Today, in those different ways we are called. And in the different vocations also, now married people, they are asked, called for catechism. They are called for a, to be a lector, a reader. Uh, this way they are demanded in different ways. So they are, they are not leaving their married life. But they commit themselves for the special vocation in that uh, living of married life. Yes, Father, you very beautifully explained to us how we can respond to this call. You differentiated how the laity can respond to this call as well as how the priests, uh, pr according to the priesthood, how, could, how we could uh, respond to this same calling in different ways and different manners in different degrees because as laity, so if we are um, addressing the laity, what could you say? How could we uh, respond to this call? If you could go a little bit deeper and explain to us because it is about the call of discipleship that we are discussing today. Uh, if you could just briefly. Yeah, us. now, as laity, first we, in the lay living, uh, church is really uh, composed of 99% of laity. Right? Among these faithful, so different uh, ministries are there. Now, I said for them there is married life. Also there are people, they remain laity, but not married, unmarried. We have. Then we have laity, widows and 
like that. So all the ladies are there, but in this layhood, lady living, different vocations are there, God giving in for the uh, living or the sustenance of the church. So that's why I said we need catechists, we need uh, lectors, we have lady who are really get involved in charity activities, and uh, then uh, we have lay leaders, those who are there to enrich the family life, because sometimes very specially only priests or religious, they can't get involved in the enrichment of the family life. Because lately they are living in it and they have the vocation for it and in that they can give guidance for others, they can give enrichment or the nourishment for the young and the, those who are go going through uh, crisis in marriages. So in that they give their put their self for the sustenance of the vocations or the uh, sustenance of the lives of these lay people within the church. Therefore, they can really, as disciples, get involved in this calling of the Lord and uh, make the church really powerful. That's why we call the church a synodal church. All together uh, moving and the ch uh, priests are there to give the animation. They are not uh, to uh, have be the dictators. They are to give, uh, be the animators. But among them, the laity are with their own calling. They can also be the animators and make the church as the disciples, uh, the powerful communion in the life. Yes, Father, as you just said, as laity, we have a big responsibility and there are ample possibilities uh, to be done to church and to be active members. So with that, shall we move to the first reading for today? Second reading, second sorry. Reading. The second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 7, <coughs> verse 29 to 31. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the word as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. Father, when we take this first reading and uh, sorry, the second reading uh, from the first letter of St. Paul. What could you say about this whole passage? Now, with the uh, readings of the letter, first letter to the Corinthians, uh, now, uh, here we find really St. Paul speaks of that uh, world is temporal first. It's uh, not all uh, uh, fully, uh, it remains. It will be changed. So it, uh, the changing or the coming of the Lord is there. But with regard to repentance, some sort of necessities are there. Uh, now, in the marriages, uh, usually as man and woman, they should have the sexual union, and it is uh, essential in the married life. Otherwise, uh, it is not married life. So now, when the change, if you are repent, uh, if you are really getting involved in changing yourself or repentance or something else, uh, there must be getting away from that and giving uh, your life for the Lord. So that's how it comes when you are weeping, not as weeping, uh, as that. Because when a season is separated, in that season, uh, that we are to put the Lord as the main. The time as the main time. When it ma makes the main time for repentance, so other activities are not involved. Now, suppose 
uh, if you when you go for a retreat uh, if you enter the retreat uh, entering into retreat means your concentrate is put into the lord so you do not have the concentration on the other activities likewise when you put your uh, yourself on to repentance you put your main attention concentration on repentance when it is there you are not going to weep you are not going to have any union that's why he says don't think that you have a wife or the husband so you put yourself really concentrated on the lord and on god and on the teaching and then look for a balance or a credit or a uh, sometimes it is maybe a debit within your life you look for it and you find um oh my god i have gone away i turn myself so with the concentration you find that you are not uh, really attuned to the lord you are not giving real credit to the lord and you find it and you turn to god that's why st paul is really stressing you to concentrate yourself on the lord and take a balance or the credit balance or the debit balance that you have when there is a debit you really find what should i do i should go to the lord i should make my life corrected and find the real life in the lord so that is the demand st paul makes and he gives to the corinthians very specially and today it applies to all of us to think of ourselves and to see how we are and where we are yes father so when it comes to repentance as you just mentioned father when we repent we totally focus on the lord and we concentrate on the lord then um, all these things those weeping as not weeping uh, those rejoicing as not rejoicing those buying as not owning and all these stresses and mentions and points to one direction as not being attached to anything being detached yeah. and uh, fully being concent i mean concentrating on the lord if you could just um, mention about that aspect of it being it detached from right. everything yeah. now as we concentrate on all that because we find the at last it said those use in the world as not using it fully because now we are not for the world right so we are here living in the world but we are not we have other end that is the lord alone so we look for the eternal life we look for total holiness in life so this is the end of life or the target of life uh, that we live for so when we having it so when we detach from it means uh, oh we are not really totally getting away from it we feel the weeping is there but as we put ourselves into the lord and we concentrate totally where we are we think of how we are moving then if we start to weep what would happen we do not think of where to uh, get ourselves we feel and we cry and we do all that we finish with it but when we put ourselves totally to the lord we find where we hurt the lord where i hurt my neighbor my husband my wife and then i turn to the lord and say yes i get well with my husband i get well with my wife i get well with my family and i really live a life with the family with my wife for happiness for uh, uh, newness of life then we are totally getting into this target of holiness 
and we find the Lord and we use the things of the world in a way to have life here on earth but target is that I live with good relationship with my children, with my husband, with my wife and I am for the Lord. Yes, Father. In other words, uh, in other words isn't it uh, the sense of neutral, being neutral uh, to some extent that it is uh, referring here. And also it says, for the world in its present form is passing away. If you could uh, explain to us in detail what this means, the present form is passing away. Now, uh, we all believe and uh, in the creed we say, right, at the end, the world will be new. Or we are say again in theological way, right, the world will be transformed. Uh, it will become a new world, right. Though, and we say again, the people will be resurrected in body and soul and the world will be a new or the, it will be the new heaven. So that's what we believe in. So, uh, what is now is not be there. So that's what we say uh, and we uh, liturgically on the last Sunday, we have the feast of Christ the King. And it is also celebration of the end of the world. Right? That is our target and we believe. So the world that we live in really transformed into a new world. It is there. So we are living for this world and we expect of it. And we find on that living of the world, we find everything is totally happiness. Everything is totally joy and we are in total happiness and joy. There is no need of life again. So uh, new lives will not be there, marriage won't be there and everything is total. So for that we are living for. Therefore with repentance what we always look for, the changing world is there but we always look for the living with the Lord as we any prayers we say, Lord give us the eternal life. Lord, give us the life with you. All that means that we expect to live with the Lord and for that always there is a necessity that we feel that there is a weakness in my life. In that weakness I have to be perfect. That's why Jesus said, as the Heavenly Father is perfect, uh, you must be perfect. So this is what, so why the repentance is there. So with this repentance, we always try to make ourselves to be perfect as the Heavenly Father. So it's a journey. So we, uh, we have to acknowledge we uh, get ourselves better and again we fall, we get ourselves better. So we uh, run for this perfect, uh, perfection and it is a demand Jesus made and with this we enter into that. Therefore. The world is passing and it will also become perfect and we also look for this perfection and repentance always is for this reaching of the perfection in Christian life. Yes, Father. So, as followers, uh, we should be, you know, uh, wanting to be disciples of Jesus. As Jesus calls, we should be able to respond to him. At the same time, you just mentioned about repentance and how we should be uh, open to the aspect of repentance in our lives and how we should be uh, taking this life's journey towards perfection. So with that, uh, with all these readings, according to the liturgy of the word, is there a special message that you need to convey to our viewers uh, about today's liturgy? And yeah, in the world today, what we live in, uh, always they say evil is good. It brings happiness. So people are always going for that. But Jesus says, 
So you have to get away from sin. Sin makes you corrupt. Sin makes you die. Therefore, better you repent and come to me and live in goodness, you find that you are living forever. So this is what he really says. And as a disciple of Jesus, that we really need, that we put ourselves to the Lord and live a life very specially in the direction of goodness. And with that, we find that the Lord is there and we are in the kingdom. And in that kingdom, we find always joy and happiness. Yes, Father. So taking everything into consideration, what we discussed, what we extracted from today's message, let us offer a prayer together. I invite you to offer a prayer as a community with all our viewers, uh, as one family, so that we will have these kingdom values uh, working in us and we will uh, grow up into true discipleship, uh, genuine disciples of Christ. Let us offer a prayer for that, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, we discussed of your love, the mercy for your people. You demand for repentance, and when we in repentance turn to you, you are full of mercy, full of love. Let us experience this love of yours right through our journey. Help us to always to accept our own failures and to come to you and then begin a new life every time where we will be new and we find power and the vigor through your grace. Again, loving Father, let us be really a true disciples. For that true discipleship, help us to live everything and put the teaching of your Son as our life and put on Jesus so that we find life is really a life with Jesus and in that we find everything is joy and everything is happiness. The vocation is a way for joy and vocation is for happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, my dear Father, we are so grateful and thankful to you for imparting this biblical knowledge to us and enriching us today. Thank you once again, Father. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters. So, even today, Jesus is calling us. He's telling, come, follow me. And how seriously have we taken up this call? And do we delay? Do we debate and put off this calling? Or do we respond to this calling enthusiastically? So today, as we ponder over the message, let us ask our good Lord to uh, give us the grace to be true disciples. So with that message, we wind up our program for today. We uh, hope to see you next week at the same time. Until then, stay safe and God bless you.